I want to show you the most important tool at your disposal you have right now. You ready? Brace yourself. Yes. Welcome everybody. Coach Borino with you on this Tuesday or if you're watching this on replay, watching this video on YouTube on whatever lovely day it is for you. Welcome to the Borino Live. God, it's good to see you. We have some important stuff to cover today. We have important business that will get you out of the rut, get you out of the mindset of trouble. Of You're stuck, many of you. So we're going to get you unstuck. We're going to help you. I have some practical tips some practical strategies for you. I'm going to answer your questions. So post them in the comments. We'd be happy to talk to you. First things first, the most important part of the training, of course, cappuccino. And with that, I have a lot of notes today. Wrote them up about an hour ago for you. So let's get cranking. What do you say? Everybody knows my name, right? If you don't, this is your first time with me. Welcome. It's really great to have you. I've been doing this for many, many years. I was first a real estate agent. I wrote several books for real estate agents. I, I have courses on how to get leads, how to get listings, how to help clients get paid, make money, be successful real estate agent. Um, one of my strengths is to take something complicated, like how do I make money in real estate without going broke or hungry? And how do I do it without losing dignity, sanity, without wasting a lot of time, wasting a lot of money. I tend to like something that's simple, something that's executable, because if it's 147 steps and if it costs $7,000 and if it requires six months for you to see the first deal, nobody's going to do it. I know you won't do it. I won't do it. And we are the same in that way. You want results now. You want quick results. Not that you're looking for shortcuts, but there are ways for it to be extended long and painful and there are ways to make it quick. So I'm good at that. So let's talk about it. I want to show you the most important tool at your disposal you have right now. Mm. You ready? Brace yourself right here. This, my friends, not just the iPhone, maybe you're on Android, but this is the most important tool at your disposal. And it is being abused and misused or not used by so many agents, unfortunately. There are still two big problems I see with this tool. Problem number one, people who avoid it. Oh no, ah, oh, phone, no, I don't wanna be a telemarketer. I don't wanna bother people. I don't like when people call me, so I'm not gonna call people. I respect that and that's fine if you like to be mediocre. We'll talk about it. Problem number two is people who don't who use it the wrong way, who don't get the results. Which camp are you in? Are you afraid of it? Are you avoiding it? Or are you not getting results? Because if you're getting results, if, if things are working for you, you probably wouldn't be on this broadcast. You wouldn't be hanging out with me, right? You would be somewhere on the boat or be playing golf. You'd be spending time with your family. You'd be counting money. So you're here for one of two reasons. Either you know, shit, this is a great tool. I just need to tap into its potential. I need to figure out how to use it better. So I feel better. The people I talk to feel better and the results are good. Or how can I get out of this rut of avoiding it? Because here is what happened to me. My real estate training, first week in real estate, was in a nutshell. Welcome to real estate. This is your desk. Here's your phone. Good luck. Don't you feel kind of let down and disappointed when you entered the business? Now, I know there are exceptions to it, but in most cases, the amount of training, the amount of just basic handholding training and guidance is so bad. Am I right? And you just sit there going, oh, shit, what do I do? And then it puts you through a training that teaches you methods that barely worked 20 years ago. Or they overwhelm you with the latest, greatest. You got to spend $700 a day on Facebook advertising, on YouTube, or better yet, on TikTok. Show me one agent who makes 150, 200, 300, 500,000 a year from TikTok. One. You see what I'm saying? So of course there's confusion. Of course there's a whole bunch of training. Of course there's a whole bunch of people. Anyone who sold more than five houses a year is now a coach telling you what to do, showing you what to do, and telling you, look at me, I've done this and now I drive a fancy car and I'm very rich. You can be too. All you need is my magic system. This is the magic. This is the bridge that can connect you to people. This is the bridge that can make all your real estate dreams a reality. No joke. I'm not trying to impress you. I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass to make you feel good. But really, this can make a huge difference in your business. And I'll tell you why. We are in a people business with all the latest tools, all the latest gadgets, all the latest advances. And I love them. I mean, shit, you're watching this on social media. What does that tell you? I got to go with the program and I love it. But the truth is, this still is your best bridge to people who need to buy, to people who need to sell, who you can reach. So what's in the way? What gets in the way? I'll tell you what gets in the way. One thing, your thoughts and your emotions. Hold on a second, that's two. <laughs> well, it's your thoughts that trigger emotions. Have you ever heard this one? Or worse, have you ever said this? I do not like when telemarketers call me, therefore I will not call other people. I do not want to inflict the same damage on you. And I'm like, really? I felt the same way. My first expired listing, I had the MLS printout. I was sitting in my car, scared shitless for 27 minutes like this. My hands were shaking, I smeared the paper all over the place. That's how nervous I was. I was just as scared. I was just as uncomfortable. So the beginning when you feel the resistance, when you feel the fear and uncomfort is normal. Now, hear me on this. Before we get into the practical stuff, how we can master this very quickly and really get it down and why that matters. I don't want you to become a telemarketer. This is not about annoying people. This is not about being pushy, being salesy, reciting scripts. This is not about doing things that 
push people off. I teach the exact opposite. But you cannot master something with going in, it's not gonna work, I don't like doing it, it sucks, I'd rather be doing something else. Because friends, I have news for you and hear me on this, please. No matter how you market, advertise, lead generate, prospect, circle prospect, you wanna call it whatever you want, every first conversation you have, every first conversation is a cold conversation. So let's just say you're on ads on Facebook. God bless you. If you have the patience just to get the ads approved, more power to you. If the budget, more power to you. If you have a sophisticated follow-up and be patient enough to stay in touch for months, sometimes years, more power to you. I'm not knocking it. But one, one moment, one day, that lead that finally relented to the barrage of emails you've been sending them, right, picks up the phone and starts talking to you. It's a cold. It's a cold call. If you get a referral, you're speaking with a person you never talked to before, it's a cold call. If somebody calls you on your sign, it's a cold call. It's all cold calls at first. You are cold calling and you have to master it whether you like it or not. There comes a point where you need to have not a call, but a conversation. The mastery is not at being a cold caller or a telemarketer and just plow through it like every other salesperson would. No, those days are over and hope they're not coming back. The customers have become more sophisticated. The market has become more sophisticated. Tools are better and they enable to do something that has not been possible at the volume and quality and effectiveness ever before. Where you can have multiple line dialers, you can have data sources with the best phone numbers you can possibly get of high quality prospects. And you can just sit comfortably in your office with a headset on with your feet up drinking nice cappuccino like this, talking to high conversion prospects. But here's the secret, not cold calling, connecting. So you cannot sell real estate, you cannot sell homes, you cannot be good at what you do without being a good communicator. I have a good friend. He became first a private client of mine. I trained him for about six months. We worked together. And Mike went from $640,000 in commissions per year, which is not nothing to sneeze at. That's pretty good income. Local agent here in Northern Virginia, Keller Williams agent, great guy, Mike Putnam. We trained, we worked together for maybe five months, maybe six. This year, he's gonna close over a million dollars. My man, Mike, is a great communicator. He calls people every day. He has conversations every day. I had conversations every day. My strength for sell by owners and mainly expired listings. That became my strength. I talked to people who wanted to sell. I figured, might as well. Rather than just approaching it cold, they'd be like dating. Wouldn't you rather be on a date site where there are single people looking for a partner? That just makes sense, doesn't it? You must be a good communicator. And what makes a good communicator versus a salesperson is number one, a different mindset. I'm going in thinking, there are people out there who need my help. There are people out there who want to talk to me. There are people out there I can connect with. There are people out there who are looking for a good agent. It's a different notation, different frame, different mindset. Does that make sense? Now here's the second part to it. Remember I said you cannot let your emotion control your income. Here's the thing. I have a great dentist. I also have a fear of dentists. Maybe you know that. I'm a chicken when it comes to dentists. I really am. But I go diligently twice a year for my cleaning and do all that stuff that I'm supposed to do. My dentist is catering to chicken. So I'm his target audience, obviously. Dr. Lee is very patient, very kind, very pleasant super knowledgeable. He's an expert. He's the best I could find in my area without driving hundreds of miles. He's awesome. When I go see Dr. Lee, like I had a problem with one of my uh, one of my crowns. I didn't ask Dr. Lee, hey, are you having a good day today? Are you looking forward to working on my crown today? Is it a good time for us to, to take care of this problem? I don't know, maybe Dr. Lee had a good day, maybe not. Maybe he felt like being in office, maybe not. I, as his patient, did not give a shit. I had a problem, I had an expert, he knows how to fix my problem, he fixed my problem. Here's my point. There are days you're gonna love your business. There are days where it's so satisfying when you negotiate a hard deal, when you win over 15 other offers, when you score that listing over six other agents. And I love those stories of my students when you guys send them to me. That's a high, that's phenomenal. But there are not that many because the way to get to those listings and sales and commissions very often takes a lot of drudging, a lot of hard work, a lot of mundane work, a lot of boring work, a lot of rejection, a lot of discomfort. Would you? allow the emotion control your income. Would Dr. Lee one day say, you know what? I don't feel like going to the office today and helping people. I don't care if I have seven appointments scheduled, I don't give a shit, I don't feel like it. No, there may be days where he loves his work and enjoys talking with patients and helping them and there may be days where he hates it. But if I have an appointment, he's gonna show up and solve my problem. That's why he's a professional and that's why he makes hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions. You with me? You need to become the doctor of real estate. You need to take the same approach. I got the skill, I got the knowledge, I got the ability, I got the passion for it. Sometimes more than others, doesn't matter. But I know how to help people. I enjoy doing what I do in a larger scheme of things. I make a big impact on somebody's life. I can get paid really well. I control who I work with, when I work, where I work, how I work. All of that is under my control. I'm the CEO of my company. That's freedom, love that. You can sit down and master a plan how I make $250,000 next year. Phenomenal. You can do that 
on a job, you can do it pretty much anywhere other than in a job like this one, in a career or in an occupation like this, where you run your own business. You with me? So there is a lot of positive. But there may be days it's going to work or not. There may be days you're going to feel like it or not. You just simply get the shit done. Just like Dr. Lee's going to show up and take care of problems of his patients who will gladly pay him for it. Now, he's going to solve my problem whether he has a great day or a shitty day. He's going to take care of my problem whether he feels like it or not. He will either he's happy or he's bored. Nobody cares. I certainly don't. I mean, he's a good guy. I like him, but I really don't care. What I care is my pain gone. There are people out there right now, buyers and sellers in pain, who do have a problem, who, who have a desire, who have a goal. Your job is to use these tools to connect with them through conversations. See, it's a different intent. It's a different intent. It's a different mind frame. It's a different frame. Now, instead of cold calling and annoying and pestering and bothering, which you are, it's an interrupt prospecting. Sure is. Somebody's doing something else, the phone rings. Oh, pick it up. There's nothing pleasant about it. I'm not here again to blow smoke up your ass pretending, oh, don't take it personally. No, the rejection sucks and it's part of it. The hard work is part of it. The boredom is part of it. That's just part of the deal. That's part of the deal whether you're a dentist, an accountant, a president. It's part of it. Whenever there's an opportunity to make 200, 300, 500, a million or more, there's going to be negative emotions, there's going to be hard work, there's going to be some stress, there's going to be some pressure, some rejection, some discomfort. It's just part of the deal. What's the alternative? Sitting somewhere 9 to 5, wondering what could have been. That's the only alternative. You got to master this sucker. I need to make sure you hear me. You got to master this. What you've got to master is not cold calling or scripted dialogues or handling objections. It is the art of conversations. Because once you get good at that, you will very quickly discard about 99% of the people who don't have the need. Now, let me tell you about the rejection real quick. Are you interested why people don't want to talk to you? There are only four reasons. There are only four simple reasons. Number one, they have no desire to move. And that's fine. They simply don't need you. They would like me going to a dentist just to say hello. <laughs> Nobody does that, right? I'm like, hey, weirdo. So you don't need to do that. So that's great. They quickly told you, no, thank you. Don't have any interest in your service. Fantastic. Move on to the next one. Number two, they have the desire to move. They're excited about the move. Just not right now. That's cool. What do we do with those long term? If it's six months from now or a year from now, yeah, take their information, put it in my CRM, keep in touch with those. That's number two. Number three, they have the desire. They have the urgency. They just don't know you. They don't know you. There is no level of connection. And then the agents trained by bad trainers or old stale type of training are taught to do the big leap. Close them for the appointment. Handle the objections. Overcome the resistance. Use the clever lines. Of course, you're going to get more resistance. More push just creates more resistance. For every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. If I don't push, they can't push back. There's nothing to push against. You with me? And here's, here's number four. Number one, they have no desire. No desire right now. They don't know you. And number four, they know you. They just don't trust you. Or put it another way, they don't feel like you are their best choice. You with me? Those are the four. Now, here is the problem. You don't know which one it is. And it's like driving with your eyes closed, right? You're going to hit something. So you need to figure out. So I don't discard those who want to move and I don't confuse those who don't want to move for those who do. The art of connection, the art of conversation, the art of communication is really in the art of building trust. Building trust. And you can do it very quickly. You can do it sometimes within seconds. It doesn't take a long time. Sometimes it does and that's fine. It's also the art of patience. That is the secret, my friends. But you need to approach it from a different frame, from a different perspective as something, hey, I got this cool thing that can potentially connect me with a bunch of people who need my help, who are going to pay me. Hell yes, I want to talk to them. And hell yes, I'm going to make it as pleasant as easy as possible. Can it be done? Of course it can be done. Can you do it? Absolutely. Is it making sense so far? We're going to go deeper, but I just want to kind of set the frame for this. You can have a messy success or comfortable, tidy mediocrity. In other words, when you start this journey and you accept that this is part of what I have to do is communicate with people and it's the easiest, cheapest, fastest way by far, it's going to be messy at first and that's fine. It's going to be wobbly at first. It's just like learning any other skill because here's the good news, my friends. To be a good communicator, to be able to qualify people, to build trust with them, to answer their questions, to figure out what is it stopping them and there's only one thing. There's only one thing that's stopping them. Only one. Fear. Fear. So the people you talk to, whether it's circle prospecting around your listing or calling for sell by owners, calling expired listings, working with your sphere, communicating with your sphere, the resistance, if they have a desire to move, because if they don't, it doesn't matter. But if they do, it's just from fear, only from fear. So as a master communicator, imagine if you could connect, build trust and connection so deep that it would simply tell you, hey, look, this is what concerns us. So I'm going to give you one of the most powerful confident communication strategies that I normally teach in boot camps and I normally teach in uh, confidence clinics, but I'll give it to you for free. You ready? Here it is. I'll give you one word. Don't let it fly over you. Don't, don't let it 
feel like oh, it's too simple. It's not. It's actually pretty complex and definitely not easy, but here it is. How do you know? Ask, ask. But Marino, can it really be that simple? Absolutely. It can be that simple. Could you give us an example? I'll be happy to. Two people talking. Two coaches for price of one. How cool is that? Let me, let me give you an example. You're talking with a prospect and let's say it's an expired listing. You're following up and you get pushbacks, you get delays, you get resistance, you get brush, and you just feel like they want to move, but they're stuck. Have you had prospects like that? So I'm having a conversation. I would say something like, Jim, I got this feeling you really still, you still, you're still thinking about Florida. Florida still sounds pretty good. It would still be nice being closer to your daughter. It would still be fun to hang out with your buddies and play a round of golf every now and then. And it would be nice to have Thanksgiving together as a family. And it would be nice to enjoy the weather. Am I right? No, this is the opener. I will break it down for you. Let me just walk you through it. Would it be nice? And you're gonna hear something like, most likely, yeah, that sounds still pretty good. We're still thinking about it. And you say, okay, I hear it. But I also sense that something's holding you back. Like, it would be nice, you've been looking at the properties, you've been kind of going back and forth, but something's holding you back. Notice how I changed my tone. This is not a sales call anymore. It's almost like a friend helping a friend, like a relative or, or somebody closer who's really inquisitive, who is really curious, because that's one of the core secrets of good confident connection communication, is you must genuinely care. So ask about, What's really holding you back? What do you feel like is the biggest barrier? Why not play that round of golf? Other than work on your putting, I know. <laughs> Little humor right now. What's holding you back? Tell me more. And here comes part three. Be quiet. Let it sit. And you know how hard that is sometimes? Where we have this urge, especially when we're a little nervous, to just keep talking. And you just sit quietly. Let them ponder the future here and the future in Florida. And you just sit with compassion and wait. There'll be a long silence very often. And then they something like, well, I'm just worried that we're going to regret the move. Something that will start with the phrase like, I'm worried or we're concerned or we're afraid or the problem is, is an indicator of two things. You're going into their core, what's really holding them back and very honest, open contact connection has just been made very powerful way. And let them vent it out. And it's going to be something like, we're worried that we can't afford the payment or we're worried that uh, we're going to hate the neighborhood or we're concerned about this, that and the other. And they may have 10, 15 different constructs. But underneath it, what's fueling is fear because at the end, every prospect you work with, everyone you get on the phone or in person or on Zoom virtual is battling between two forces. Fear that's holding them back, that's making them stay, the status quo, and the desire to move, to solve the problem that they have. Because if they don't have a problem, you don't have a prospect. Either a strong desire to live somewhere else or big discomfort of staying where they are.